Coming September 1st, Rewind 9-11. Today we've had a national tragedy. An incredible plane crash into the World Trade Center. A look back at the tragedy of that day. Another explosion has taken place at the Pentagon. It became very apparent that what was happening was terrorism. Terrorism. Fox News presents... Rewind 9-11. People who knock these buildings down will hear all of us soon. Listen on Odyssey. Curiosity Stream has thousands of documentary films and shows available on demand on any device. We're the Netflix for nerds, the Hulu for history buffs, the Disney Plus for the scientist in us. There sure are a lot of streaming services, aren't there? Curiosity Stream is the one you definitely need if you're the type to nature doc and chill, if you're an armchair astronaut, if you prefer physics to psychics, or perhaps you know a precocious paleontologist. Go to curiositystream.com to learn more and sign up today. What's going on, everyone? Joe Cameron, John Ritchie. It is 94 WIP. Great to be with you from the beautiful Parks Casino Sportsbook. We are in Bucks County right here in Ben Salem. You can hop on by for the next four hours while we're here. Of course, uh, anytime, any day. Day or night, a great day to be at the beautiful Parks Casino uh, Sportsbook. Be with us today, 215-592-9494. Great to be here as we discuss a lot in Philadelphia sports, including the latest Phillies lost last night. They do it again. Back to 500. Questionable decision by Joe Girardi. Much to discuss with the Phillies, who now are five games back of Atlanta. And, of course, the Eagles gearing up for the final preseason game. That's tomorrow versus the Jets. How much they're gearing up? Or who they're gearing up to play, that's another matter. We'll discuss that, the Eagles preseason so far, and all of it with you at 215-592-9494. Richie Rich. Joe. Hey, bud. You know, uh, once upon a time on this earth, there was a dragonfly that lived that had a wingspan that was two and a half feet across. A two, an insect that had wings that were two and a half feet across. I'm going to say it had a giant mandible that it would catch amphibians and fish in a giant insect going around swooping down, catching fish and eating them. So it's cool, but I'll say this. Called a Meganeropsis. I'm not really that surprised because that, I mean, you know, there were dinosaurs back in the day and that would seem absurd. So, you know, proportionally speaking, the big insects, uh, yeah. It makes some sense there. That's pretty giant, though. That is pretty giant. Pretty giant. 247 million years ago. All right, 215-592-9494. Let's get to it. Tomorrow, final preseason game for the Birds. Now, I think, John, you and I both think Nick Sirianni is making a mistake. You know, to this point, not much playing the starters. Or how he's making a mistake, not much playing the starters. Or or, or Jeffrey Lurie's making a mistake, to, to this point, not much playing the starters. Look, what they do tomorrow night, I expect to be underwhelmed. Because I think they've set in motion a standard of not much playing the starters, and I'll be shocked if it changes tomorrow. We'll, we'll get to that as we move through the show, and certainly tomorrow oh. that'll be a focus. But, but, John, let's focus in on what we have seen from the Eagles so far in these first two preseason games. Because, you know, when I got back from Greece and on Monday, the day before you were back, you know, I made a big point of emphasis to say, now we didn't really dive too much into it, but I, I said it a couple times. It, it was sort of a, I don't know, a public service announcement. It was a, like, let me be clear to everyone thing. Let me, let me help you out. Cautionary tale. And I was telling people, don't overreact to the Eagles getting crushed in the last six quarters. When they had backups and really, for the most part, backup backups or backup backup backups in there. And, and I know there are some people concerned with what they've seen. I mean, look, it's been ugly. They've been run over, particularly the defensive line. And obviously the, the third string quarterback is feeble and needs to be cut. But, John, I sense just with your, you know, limited commentary in the last couple of days as we have looked back that you are concerned for the coming season in part because what we've seen these last six quarters. And I'm curious where, yeah. where everyone stands on how much you value from an evaluation standpoint what we've seen from the Eagles in the preseason and what it will mean for the coming regular season. John, what are your thoughts? Well, I, I think it's a terrible sign and and i am very troubled by everyone saying hey you know that well they're they're winning these joint practices that's what they value i i don't value practices the way i do games even if they're preseason games and i I promise you for most of these players practice does not count like a game games count like games america is watching in the games 
That matters a ton for these guys. The Eagles aren't playing their players, though. The other team is. Okay. I mean, for the most part, that really some is true. Some teams are, some teams aren't. Right. But the bottom line is, at any juncture in these games, when we have our twos against the other twos, we're worse. When we have the threes against the other threes, we're worse. Yes, of course, when we have our twos out there against the other starters, we're going to get run on a little bit. But it doesn't have to be as extreme as 52 to nothing. In the, in the last six quarters I mean, that we've played. That's ugly. This, yeah. this team needs work, and it's obvious this team. It, it, when we're led by a coach who's a rookie coach who's never called offensive plays, a rookie defensive coordinator who's never called a defense, a quarterback who started four games and he's erratic as a thrower and a diagnoser, an offensive line that hasn't played together in forever, you've got to play football in game situations to get your feet wet get you get your legs under you get used to playing football again and i don't feel great about sneaking up on two teams in practice situations where they they probably weren't putting in the same level of effort as nick sirianni's you know practice all americans going out there and, and treating that like a game i don't think that same level of intensity was was matched by the opponents and that's why you hear Elliot Shore Park say, "Hey, we're undefeated in these in these four, practices." Four, four now, apparently. In these <laughs> practices, yeah. I tell you this: there are players who will mock you for being a practice All-American. They won't mock you for being a game All-American because it means you just made the team. It means you're legit. It means that you showcased your abilities on a national stage. These Eagles treat these joint practices like they're the games. I don't think the opponents have. And I don't know that for a fact, but I know that games are the only time everyone, everyone is doing all they can to put their best foot forward. I don't know that's the case in these practices. Well, well, listen, everyone can can respond and react to all this. I I share John's sentiment that I wish Sirianni or Howie was playing the regular Eagles players. I mean, if for no other reason, and believe me, this isn't the main reason, but if for no other reason, it would actually make it a little easier for all of us to evaluate what the Eagles – in 2021 really half i mean let's be real it's it's it, we are kind of going into the season i believe somewhat blind as the fan base i, I mean we know schematically they're not going to really have been running what they're going to run in a couple weeks when this thing gets real but i mean the quarterbacks barely played the defensive lines barely played i mean even guys like josh sweat and Derek barnett who should really truly be battling each other for playing time and by the way for a contract that both are eligible for i mean those guys didn't even play the last game they chose not to play them which is just crazy which really is i i think stupid but but again we'll, we'll find out from everyone at 215-592-9494 how I'm concerned positive. you are how concerned you are that the eagles with what we have seen with who they have played have gotten i mean they have gotten boat raced crushed demolished run over use whatever terms you want to use they've gotten obliterated the last six quarters doesn't matter Two one five five nine two ninety four ninety four. I'm let- positive Nick Sirianni wants to play these, you know, starters in games. I'm positive. I don't know. The, I he don't wants know. I don't Jalen know. Jalen Hurts to get work, real work, game work. He knows that's what he needs to to get better. Maybe. That's what he needs for for the staff to be able to evaluate him properly and and this offense properly. But that we, we all have this sinking suspicion that. He doesn't have the say well, he needs to dictate whether these guys go out and there, I, and, and I, that's broken. And I think what specifically supports that, I'll call it reality or perceived reality, I mean, I believe it to be true what you're saying, is I think the Eagles' decision to not play their starters is, is largely predicated on the last three seasons with enormous injuries in season, and Howie Roseman and Jeffrey Lurie got freaked out about it. I think they're trying to kind of do an overcorrection, if you will, and I believe they are having a team – from a starting standpoint, they will be less prepared for week one than I'd like to see them be prepared because they're not getting the work in in the games. Now, what we do know, though, is a lot of other guys are playing. And honestly, John, I really push aside the backups struggling. I, I mean, I know it doesn't bode well if, if those backups have to get in there if there are injuries across the board again this year. I understand that. I'm Joe, not there will be injuries across the board because that's what happens well, in football. There will be injuries. And I don't especially know. when you got one of the worst medical staffs in, in the NFL. Yep. I mean, going, going back the last few years, that's our reality. We, we don't have our starters stay healthy. 
It, it, like, it, we, we dwell upon injury here. We focus on injury. Yeah. When you go into a season saying, hey, don't get injured, that's what happens. I want a team that goes out there and says, you know what, I'm not going to get hurt. I, I, I want to be I, – I want the challenge of going out there and beating that guy across from me. I'm going to hurt him. You know, I, I'm going to hurt everyone in my way. And, and we don't have that attitude. That's the attitude that wins at playing football. That's the attitude they have in Baltimore. I talk about Baltimore a lot. Yeah, I know you do. I appreciate John Harbaugh a lot. And, and he was our special teams coach when I was here as, as a player. They've won umpteen straight preseason games, and I know a lot of people say that doesn't matter at all. I think it does. I think it creates a mindset. I think it creates a, an attitude, a mentality. Think about that attitude, the attitude that wins. I don't want to be the soft, unaccountable team that takes the field on Sundays. And I think we're a soft, unaccountable team. Well, this is another example of the Eagles taking, uh, I mean, maybe it's starting to become somewhat traditional, but historically speaking, non-traditional approach. And, and, and they, it's going to boomerang back in their face if they struggle early in the year. Look, 215-592-9494. Why am I not concerned with what we've seen in the preseason? Well, they barely played the starters. Last game, the linebackers played some time, for sure. The, the young wide receivers played some time. Miles Sanders was briefly in there. Steve Nelson was briefly in there. I mean, look, other teams, obviously that last game, the other team played their starters far longer, and frankly, their twos far longer than the Eagles. And how about this? To me, the two main reasons, if I had to really break it down, what are the two main reasons why the Eagles have gotten crushed in these last six quarters? Well, I'll I'll sum it up this way. Reason number one is because the backup, backup defensive linemen are getting run over. Just, and that's not Fletcher Cox, that's not Brandon Graham, that's, that's not Sweat. That's not Barnett. I mean, those guys, the, the guys that are actually in there are getting demolished. Now, hopefully we don't see those guys. The other main reason why the Eagles are struggling is because Nick Mullins, who's not even going to make the team, I hope, that guy stinks. That guy's horrible. I mean, you know, Nick Mullins, go back two games ago, second half, basically flipped the game by, by giving the other team the ball a couple times. And obviously he played a good chunk of this most recent game. Nick Mullins shouldn't even be on the Eagles. So as I evaluate the 2021 Eagles and project forward what we will see in two and a half weeks when this gets real versus Atlanta, and then the next week, and then the next week, and on and on and on for a couple months, no, I'm really not that concerned. I'm really not concerned much at all with the preseason. I'm really not. Now, look, 215-592-9494 for everyone to weigh in. And I'll just say this final sort of headline for why I'm not concerned with what we've seen from the, from the Eagles in the preseason. Because it's the preseason. I mean, haven't we been through this enough to know? I mean, for the love of God, haven't we been through this enough to know? Case in point, 2015, when we had, you know, Lombardi Trophy Super Bowl aspirations parade because of the Eagles' dominant preseason with Sam Bradford in Chip's third year, and then it crashed and burned. There have been many instances in NFL history of teams that struggle or get wild to the preseason and then have very successful seasons. Happens all the I mean, I remember the 85 Bears, they went 1-3. and three. Then they went 15-1, and one, won the Super Bowl, one of the great teams of all time. So, like, let's take a breath here. Let's, let's not freak out in this preseason. I think you should freak out that we are less talented than other teams are depth-wise. Well, their third string is. That's an, that's no, a, depth, that's a, our depth well, that's is I mean. less talented. Yeah, our, our string, depth is less string. talented. Yes, you're, you're right. But, but the, the guys that are talented, the guys that are the premium top-flight players, are few and far between, and we're trying to protect them like they're China dolls, you know, made, made out of, you know, porcelain. That, that's not the, the approach that you, you take to win at this game. I feel like we are clueless at the top as to just how untalented we are and how much work we need and to the fact that in order to win at football, you have to go out there and toil. You have to go out there and work. That's... That's what's been proven in this league. And I, I feel like we're just throwing darts at a dartboard, trying you know, new approaches, new ideas, uh, going out and asking, hey, what might work? And then, and then just trying and, and you know, shooting at that, just taking guesses here. This is that approach that you're talking about, like winning in the preseason. Yeah. I know for a fact that that's not going to hurt you. I, I know for a fact that that's not going to work against you. 
I mean, maybe it doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. I, I think it I think it actually matters more that you have a good feel for the the experience of taking the field with your teammates and, and going out and having success. You know, right now, think right now these Eagle players think about their experience in a game situation. You go out there and you get trounced. I mean, think about that. Think about the feeling that leaves, whether it's a practice game or not. Yeah, but Fletcher Cox on the sideline, he don't care. I mean, I mean, well, I don't, I don't mean that in a critical way. He I mean, should that, no, what, 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 these guys should care about doing. You know what? The, 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 John, the essence of football is going out there and beating your guy. Uh, if, right. Uh, well, well, but but Fletcher, but Fletcher Cox hasn't had a chance to beat his guy. That's my point. If I'm Fletcher Cox standing on the sideline, do don't it, you do think that's a problem? But it, don't you think it's a problem that these guys, like, we're, I, we're yes, just saying, yes. hey guys, when the season starts, go, just yes. go, just well, go, do it. Like, there's a you, you practice for a reason because you have to right. get used. to I agree, doing John. It. I agree with you. And let's get to the calls. I'll just say this: I agree with you, John, that it's not great that the Eagles third stringers and sometimes second stringers are getting beat. I'm not and, and crushed. I'm not pushing that aside. But Fletcher Cox standing on the sideline during the game doing an interview with Dave Spadaro when he is seeing his backup or his backup, really his backup backups getting crushed. It's not Fletcher Cox on the field. And in two and a half weeks it will be. Go to the phones. 215-592-9494. There's really two different issues in hand. One is what do you make of Sirianni and Howie and Lurie not playing the starters? Much at all. The other issue is, what do you take away from these first two games as it pertains to what it really means for the coming season? Honestly, I take very little. I'm going to be outraged when we find out that the starters oh, aren't playing. I, and I expect to find out that the starters aren't playing in this game. I, I think, I you think they will just, play You can't very just little. start the season very in little. September and say, guys, go do do your thing and be be good at it. I think they'll play them just a tiny little bit. Let's go to the – and I think that's a mistake. 215-592-9494. We kick it off with Ja'Cory. What's going on, Ja'Cory? What's going on, guys? Hey, buddy. Hi, Ja'Cory. Listen, I think you guys are right. I want to see, um, especially Jalen Hurts, like at least a half. Yeah. Or – um. You know, starting offense at least a half. I got to see you guys bang a little bit. I don't really care so much about the defense. Probably like the secondary, but defense line, no. But I want to see those guys bang at least a half. Well, I do too. Jacory, what do you make of the fact, though, what we have seen? When they lose 52 to nothing with all these backups, do you make anything of that or not? Um, I mean, I do want to see more. I just want to see more, get to see the young guys play. Well, you're well. You're seeing a lot of that. You're seeing a lot of young guys. I, I want to see. I, I think we need to add more to these positions. I think we need to still need a third cornerback, uh, probably another safety with um, Roddy getting back. Um, I would like to go get a veteran receiver, probably off waiver wire. I don't know if it's a trade for one. Ten. I even say this: call up Chicago, get a six-round pick for Nick Foles. I really don't like. Um, you know, um, what's the guy named Mullen or really Joe yeah, Black? Yeah, like, yeah. So, um, yeah, more depth at these positions. Let's get a third outside corner. Um, and we just need – because I want to see the young guys play at the same time. Like, I like Milton Williams because he's – the last game – He's look, he's look, listen, Ja'Cory, and appreciate the comment. He's looked a little better than, than others. I mean, Milton Williams, you know, they may – you know, it's early, but, but maybe they made a good pick there. Let's talk to Mitch right now. Mitch, you're on WIP. Yeah, here's a million-dollar question. Why don't you get Serenami, whatever his name is, <laughs> onto the show, and you ask that particular question about, hey, guy, how come you're not playing your starters? Maybe we could clear this up in five minutes. Well, he, well, he's essentially being asked that question in the press conferences, just to be clear. I mean, he's being asked versions of that question, and he, he really isn't giving you – uh, too much insight into their Says thinking. It's a joint decision. Yeah, that but but making. the one thing, Mitch, I think he's been pretty clear on that does give us some insight into his or their thinking is that they really value these joint practices and believe that they, to a large extent, replace the competition that normally comes in a preseason game from an evaluation standpoint. I mean, we know it's basically well, that and the fact. That the Eagles have been, I mean, common sense tells us, they're not going to, like, totally announce it, but common sense, connect the dots, the team has been decimated by injuries, they get freaked out, 
and Howie and Lurie probably instructed whichever coach was going to come in, in this case it's Sirianni, hey, we're, we don't want to play our, our regular players much in the preseason. I think it's a mistake, but I believe that's exactly what's occurred. Well, when game four comes around, we could go back to this conversation and yeah. say, okay, they're two and two. Things aren't looking that bad. Yeah. Well, yes, uh, and I don't think that'll happen. I, when, when we get to game four, I don't think we'll be sitting at two and two because this well, is going to I'll, become I'll put, the first month of the season becomes the preseason for the starters where they go out and they have to like work their way into, into playing football. I'll make sure that I put a call in after game four and we can talk about it again. Yeah. It's a, listen, Mitch, it's a fair point. Call us early October. Let's see where it's at, 215-592-9494. Seltzer, I hate to do it to you because we're in Parks Casino today. Beautiful Parks Casino, the sports book. We're right here by the the, the, the Liberty uh, Bell Gastro Pub. Great spot here. Come on by if you can. James, hate to do it to you, but i got to give you an early assignment. Eagles play the Atlanta Falcons week one. They play in two and a half weeks. James, if you can, sir, look up Matt Ryan. See how many passes he's thrown. I mean, I don't. I, off the top of my head, I don't know the answer. Maybe Atlanta has treated it like Belichick did the other day and, and played the starters, you know, a good solid half. Or maybe they're treating it like the Eagles and barely playing them. I, I, honestly, I don't know the answer. So, James, if you can, see if you can look that up and we'll try to get a gauge of, you know, the team the Eagles play in that first game and sort of what they're doing. 215 Joe to Cameron and John Ritchie, are you concerned with the Eagles getting crushed in these last six quarters? Do you really take anything away from it? Do you agree with John and I that they really should play the starters more? All that at 215-592-9494. Plus, coming up, we get into the Phillies from last night as well. The latest loss, a big decision by Joe Girardi that backfired in the ninth inning. We'll get into that and much more from the game. Joe to Cameron and John Ritchie from the beautiful Pars Casino Sportsbook. We're here in Bucks County. Hop aboard the phone lines, 215-592-9494. Curiosity Stream has thousands of documentary films and shows available on demand on any device. We're the Netflix for nerds, the Hulu for history buffs, the Disney Plus for the scientist in us. There sure are a lot of streaming services, aren't there? Curiosity Stream is the one you definitely need if you're the type to nature doc and chill, if you're an armchair astronaut, if you prefer physics to psychics, or perhaps you know a precocious paleontologist. Go to CuriosityStream.com to learn more and sign up today. Coming September 1st, Rewind 9-11. Today we've had a national tragedy. An incredible plane crash into the World Trade Center. A look back at the tragedy of that day. Another explosion has taken place at the Pentagon. It became very apparent that what was happening was terrorism. Terrorism. Fox News presents... Rewind 9-11. People who knock these buildings down will hear all of us soon. Listen on Odyssey.